let's first talk about NAT. NAT stands for Network Address Translation. NAT is about mapping private IPs to public IPs. And the private IP address range is defined in RFC 1918, and here are the three ranges. So the first range defined in RFC 1918 is 10.0.0.0, .0 .0 .0 all the way through 10.255.255.255. It could also be abbreviated as 10.0.0.0 slash 8. The next range is 172.16.0.0 slash 12. And the final range is 192.168.0.0 slash 16. If you were to look at this diagram here, guys, you got the PCs at the bottom that are connected to a switch and we have a LAN IP range 10.1.1.0 slash 24 and on the external side of our NAT router the range is 98.228.196.0 slash 29. Now what ends up happening when we enable NAT is that the NAT router takes our private IP address and maps it to the public IP. So what that means is, you see an IPv4 header, this 32-bit source address is swapped. So what NAT router does is, it takes this source address that initially came from, so let's say if one of these guys down here below, let's say if Bob is using a machine that ends an IP address of 10.1.1.100, this guy right here. If this guy wants to ping some machine on the internet, that traffic is going to go through the switch up to the NAT router. NAT router will then perform a translation. It will swap out the source address of the LAN with the source address of the WAN and it will do that mapping for us and eventually the traffic shows up on the internet and when the internet device sees that traffic it actually sees the IP address of the external side of the, our router. It never sees that the traffic actually came from the inside of the router. It assumes that the traffic came from the outside of the router and it's able to respond back. And you may be asking yourself a question at this point, why is that the case? Why do we need NAT? Can't we just route traffic everywhere on the internet? And you would be correct. Yes, you can, but here's the challenge. Remember, ISPs or internet service providers deny private IP address space of RFC 1918 on their internet edge routers or internet PE routers. PE stands for provider edge. They drop that traffic. ISPs by default have access control lists or ACLs in place to drop traffic that originates from the RFC 1918 private IP addressing space because that traffic doesn't belong on the internet. That's the whole point of this RFC 1918. And that's what exactly what allows different companies around the world to use the same IP addressing. So case in point, in your home office, you may have your machines be configured with the IP address range of 192.168.1.0 slash 24. And at work, you may actually have the exact same space. And yet, at home, you can access the internet. And also at work, you can access the internet. Well, how could you do that? If there were potentially millions of people using the same addressing space, which is actually the case, then how could they access the internet? There would be a conflict. Well, what ends up happening is NAT or network address translation is what takes the private IPs, maps it to the public IP or IPs. It just depends on the configuration and we'll talk through those details in a bit. And that traffic eventually makes it to the internet. That's the whole idea of NAT. Now let's dig slightly deeper. So if you were to take this NAT router and draw an imaginary line that delineates between the LAN 
private IP address represented in green going south and the WAN or the public side going north. The whole idea is to logically delineate between the the private and the public side of our router. And what NAT does in this case is it takes the source IP of let's say the machine at the bottom dot 100 access a website located on that web server 80.1.1.1 when it opens up a browser and wants to access that web server if you were to zoom into the layer 3 packet we'll see what we're seeing on our screen here to the left source ip is 10.1.1.100 and the destination ip is 80.1.1.1 when this traffic makes it to the router the net router then will swap out that LAN IP with the WAN IP. It's going to change it to 98.228.168.3 before the packet is sent to the web server. When the web server gets that traffic, it's never going to see that it came from 10.1.1.100. What it's going to see is that the traffic came from 98.228.196.3. It will respond back to that IP and eventually the NAT router will then do what's called a translation between the public and the private IPs and eventually that traffic will find its way back to Bob's PC of dot 100. Now to continue building on that another concept that you want to think about is the LAN side from a NAT perspective is also called the inside of our network and the outside interface of our router facing the internet is considered outside. There's a terminology in NAT that I want you to familiarize yourself with to really understand how NAT works. The first term is inside local address. Now as the name suggests it's inside of our network and it's local to us meaning 10.1.1.0/24 range cannot be routed on the internet. Because like I alluded to earlier, RFC 1918 IP address space is blocked by all the ISPs around the globe. Nobody allows it. So that traffic will die at the edge of our internet boundary. So that's what's defined by local inside address. The other term that's very critical for you to know is inside global address. And sometimes people get a little confused with this term but I want you to pay close attention to it. The IP address of 98.228.196.1 on the outside of our router is actually considered an inside global address. And the reason it's considered inside global address is because it's inside of our network, but it's globally routable. But it's inside meaning it's in our jurisdiction. It's in our administration. It's in our control. That's where the term inside comes in. Now, when the router creates a NAT translation table, it actually maps the inside local address to the inside global address. Like literally it uses that terminology when we are doing show commands and I'll show you that momentarily. But that's exactly how the router is able to keep track of all the traffic that's going through it. So this web server that we're trying to access on the internet 80.1.1.1 is considered an outside global address. Why is it outside global address? Well it's outside of our network, outside of our control, outside of our administration. We're not controlling it. Whoever has that web server is in charge of that IP, right? It's their domain name and IP mapped to that domain name. And it's global because it's routable on the internet. And the final term that I want you to pay attention to is outside local address. Now, this is a unique bird. In 99% of the situations, you're never going to come across this. So in reality, you shouldn't actually even worry about it. But for completion's sake, so think of it, as the name suggests, it's outside local address. So local address means it's not routable on the internet, but it's outside of our control. It's outside of our administration. So think of it as if you acquired another company and now you want to connect your network with that company's network and they have their own local IP that you want to route to. In real world, you're going to come across it maybe less than 1% of the time. So I would suggest don't even worry about it. The terms you really want to understand are inside local, 
inside global and outside global addresses. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.